The movie takes place in Copenhagen, Denmark. The movie opens with the words of Maggie, who wants it all. Then we see the Marble Church, coincidentally also known as Frederick's Church. Frederick is the name of a character who brings conflict to the story. The fact that Frederick's Church is the most coveted place for couples to get married is worthy of mentioning, since this movie is all about symbolism and metaphors. This is a story about the relationship between two restaurateurs, Karsten and Maggie, who share a dream of getting a Michelin star. The title, A Taste of Hunger, talks about their pursuit of their aspirations. We see how things are in the present, and what happened in the past. The phases in the couple's lives are divided into different flavors. The first scene is in their restaurant, Malice, where Maggie observes Karsten keenly preparing a delicacy with dedication. Maggie takes a spoon of it, and is impressed with the perfect amalgam of fat, sweetness, saltiness, and freshness he has created. She points out one problem with the otherwise perfect dish, its ingredients should be separately presented on the plate, for the diner to assemble it into a perfect bite. And in the middle of all the ingredients on the plate, a fig should be placed. The fig, she says, is the fruit of paradise. Maggie goes on to talk about how they can create a nice ambience and mood for their restaurant, by switching all the lights and having an illuminating fig tree in the center. We get to see the combined efforts they are putting into providing the best dining experience. From peeling lemons gently, to using a measuring ruler to place cutlery on the table impeccably, it is an enticing scene, all in all. Karsten is at a bar. He has ordered a dish that is all about apples and apple seeds. He finds it delicious and compliments the chef there. Karsten isn't just eating the food but relishing it, analyzing it while it's in his mouth. Maggie takes a seat beside him. There is admiration in their gazes for each other. It is a role-play date night for the married couple today. Maggie says the apple is often mistaken as the forbidden fruit. It can be any fruit, since no specific fruit is mentioned in the Bible. She refers to Michelangelo's painting in the Sistine Chapel, where the forbidden fruit is a fig tree. She takes a slice of wild apple and eats it, calling the apple the sinful fruit. Karsten looks at her curiously. She says she has dated a Catholic priest, and hence knows this much. Maggie finishes her whiskey sour, and boldly gives Karsten a cue to come with her. They are sharing passionate, intimate moments, when a message interrupts them. Frank, a staff at their restaurant, informs them that there is a high possibility that the Michelin is dining at Malice tonight. Maggie and Karsten have a light of hope in their eyes and look excited at this most awaited moment. Maggie pushes Karsten to rush to the restaurant to prepare the main course. It was their date night, which is a rare event, amid all the focus on the restaurant. But this is a sacrifice they are willing to make for their shared dream. Someone anonymous is typing a letter to Karsten. The letter says Maggie is cheating on him. The letter is in a pile of mail in the restaurant. Karsten is in the restaurant to make sure that everything is ready for the Michelin. He asks Andres, one of his staff members, if it went well. Andres says a few didn't eat an oyster dish, which is normal. It was an appetizer. Karsten orders Frank, another staff member, to prepare him an oyster dish. Frank has it prepared. Karsten smells it, then eats a bit of it. Something tastes off to him. He goes to taste the ingredients and finds the lemons to be over-fermented. He is outraged, knocking away trays and stuff in the kitchen. He has the entire staff gathered around him. He compliments them for the good work, but he wants to know what made them use over fermented lemons. He asks Frank, who oversaw preparing the oyster dish as a starter, if he tasted the lemons before adding them to the dish. Frank says no. Karsten can't believe that Frank didn't bother to taste the food he was going to serve. He asks Frank what exactly was served to the guests suspected of being the Michelin. The over-fermented lemons, says Frank. He adds that the guest might not have been the Michelin. Karsten shouts in Frank's face, saying that it doesn't matter. He asks a scared staff member what the job of a chef is. She answers, to cook. He asks how a chef judges the quality of the food. She answers, by tasting it. Karsten makes the point, saying Frank isn't a chef, since he didn't taste the food he was going to serve. Karsten fires Frank without any second thought or hesitation. He asks other staff members if they think it was unfair to Frank. Everybody says no. He dismisses them all. He stands in the kitchen, feeling hopeless and overwhelmed by the stress. Apparently, he has lost the opportunity to get a Michelin star, a dream that Maggie brought with her when they first met each other a while ago. It was at a party where Karsten's brother and employer, Torben, was catering. Maggie, who was a guest at the party, wanders into the kitchen to see Torben mad at Karsten for not sticking to the promised menu for the host, and her party. The host wanted sushi, but Karsten cooked something of his choice. Torben stormed out angrily to get the sushi for the party to fix it all. Karsten's eyes met Maggie, witnessing the fiasco. She gave him a suggestion to prepare a drink for guests to engage them, until Torben gets the sushi. She offered her help. At first, Karsten asked her to leave him. But then he found her idea helpful. She helped make a whiskey sour. They tasted it before serving it to the guests at the party. While wrapping his cutting knife, Karsten asked Maggie what her goals in life were. She was surprised at his straightforwardness. She said she didn't know what she wanted in life. Karsten couldn't believe a woman like her did not know what she wanted. 
She said she'd rather tell him what she didn't want in life. While they were talking, Maggie made a hot dog in her own special way. Karsten listened to her talking about how much she loved the hot dogs. Anyone can have them at any time of day. It connects people from every stratum to each other at a hot dog stand. Karsten took a bite of Maggie's hot dog. He then made her try his dish, which she really liked. Maggie asked him if he wanted to be the chef. Karsten said he went to Japan and worked as a dishwasher when he was low on money. There, he met a chef who cooked really well. Karsten described his food as very basic, nothing fancy, but it was healthy and well put together. Karsten spoke with passion about how the concepts behind that chef's cooking style inspired him and made Karsten learn from him for a decade. The chef gave Karsten his knife as a gift, which Karsten went on to use forever. He even has a tattoo of that knife on his arm. Maggie was nothing but engrossed in Karsten's zealous talk. Karsten was telling her that he wanted local and natural ingredients for his food, which was something not everyone wanted. Maggie said that he needed to have his own restaurant and a Michelin star. Karsten scoffed at her saying that, but Maggie was smart enough to realize that it was his dream. He nods in agreement to that. Karsten again asked her what she wanted. She said she wanted all of it, a family, a successful career, and a perfectly balanced life. It was their first meeting. It was a phase of their relationship which was labeled sweet. We are back to the present time. Maggie puts her kids, Chloe and August, to bed, and goes to the restaurant to check on Karsten. She goes through the mail and finds a letter addressed to Karsten. Your wife loves someone else, it says. Maggie shoves the letter in her coat pocket hurriedly, when Karsten appears. She asks how everything went with the Michelin. Karsten tells her about the bad lemons, and that the Michelin was an English man, Mr. Hampton. He says their dream is over now. Maggie has come out of the restaurant to gather her bearings. She has two problems to worry about. One is the restaurant's Michelin star, and the other is her marriage. She tells Karsten that she is going to find Mr. Hamden while he is in town. She can plead with him to come to Malice again, and give their restaurant another chance. Karsten thinks it's absurd, but she insists that everybody has a price, and she can bribe the Michelin. We see Maggie going to a restaurant. She goes up to two staff members who are busy working. She asks to talk to one of them, a younger guy named Frederick. He isn't willing to talk to Maggie, but she insists. She takes him away and asks him if he has written that mystery letter. He angrily swears and goes away. The staff member standing there asks Maggie not to create a scene. Maggie asks him if he has seen the Michelin, to which he replies in the negative. In the past, Karsten and Maggie's relationship had a sour phase, when Frederick entered the picture. Karsten and Maggie were married with kids by then, still working on their dream of having their own restaurant. They were spending some family time in a cabin in a forest with Torben, and his family. They had invited Frederick, who was Karsten's cooking assistant at the time. Karsten went to pick the red berries with his daughter Chloe. Chloe tasted them and spat them out, saying they were sour. Karsten thought the sour taste, blended with the sweetness of the berries, was perfect. It is the skillful combination of different flavors together that counts, he remarked. Chloe pointed out innocently that Karsten talks about food way too much. Karsten argues, saying that it was his job, after all. Chloe said he wasn't at the workplace, so he didn't need to mention food all the time. For a few moments, Karsten seemed hung up on what Chloe said. He didn't know what to say. He chased after Chloe to make her laugh. But he couldn't help but continue talking about food. They got back to everyone in the cabin, and Maggie informed Karsten that she got a call, confirming that the restaurant they wanted was sold to them. There was relief and excitement on both of their faces. Maggie was saying goodnight to August, when he expressed his fear that mom and dad would get too busy with their new restaurant, to have time for him and Chloe. Maggie promised him that it wouldn't happen, ever. She tucked him in and went to sit with everyone around the fire. Maggie felt some insect creeping into her dress. She panicked and asked Frederick, who was sitting nearer to her, to check. Frederick flashed his phone light on her neck. He noticed a red mole there and commented that she better visit a doctor for it. Karsten seemed uneasy. Frederick asked him if he had not seen the mole on Maggie. Karsten replied that he had. In fact, he had told Maggie to get it checked. Maggie looked at Karsten unbelievingly and said he never did so. Frederick said his brother-in-law had the same kind of mole, and it turned out to be very serious. Maggie looked grim. Frederick offered to seek the help of his brother-in-law. Karsten asked him not to, saying that he would handle it himself. Maggie left with an excuse and went inside the cabin to drink some wine. She would rub her hand over her mole every now and then. Frederick came after her and apologized for bringing up a problem when he had no right to. She said it was totally okay. They looked at each other for a moment, and their gazes seemed out of place. That night, before falling asleep, Karsten said to Maggie that he did tell her about the mole. Maggie said he never did. Chloe, who had her back to them, was awake and overheard their talk. The following day, Karsten was preparing food, while Chloe sat on the kitchen counter near him. Frederick was helping him. Chloe picked up an oyster and asked Karsten how old it was. Three to five years, he said, the older they are, the tastier. She accidentally dropped the oyster, knocking a container of vinaigrette, and spilling it into the sink. Karsten lost his temper and swore at her. Though he became apologetic right away, his sudden outburst and shouting made Chloe upset. 
Frederick looked surprised at Karsten's behavior. Maggie took Chloe away, looking disappointed in Karsten. Torben chided Karsten for being harsh with his daughter, over something as trivial as food. Karsten went back to do his cooking. Frederick served the food to everyone at the table in the forest cabin. At the kitchen counter, Karsten put on his wedding ring, which he had taken off while preparing food. This symbolizes his focus on his passion for cooking, and only cooking. He always had put his marriage and his fatherhood aside, when in the kitchen. He came to sit at the table with everyone. His remark that the food could have been better with a vinaigrette made Maggie purse her lips. Chloe said she liked oysters and that they would taste better if they were three to five years old. She smiled while saying that it was her dad who shared that information with her. Karsten looked lovingly at his daughter. Karsten's mentor, Stellan, who was also having a vacation with them in the forest, thought the oyster dish was perfectly presented, yet simple. It tasted delicious, since all the flavors were mixed nicely. Torben compliments the dish, calling it hot cuisine. Maggie rose to give a toast to happy times, and broke the good news of getting their restaurant, Malice. Karsten looked astonished, that Maggie didn't ask him to share such an important piece of news with her. Stellan advised Karsten to work on the oyster dish, so he could make it his signature dish. Torben's wife praised Karsten and Maggie for being a power couple, managing everything together without getting bored of each other. Karsten raised his glass to Maggie and their dream. Maggie raised hers to their dream, and to the kids. In the present time, Maggie messages everyone, saying that if anyone sees a solo diner, they should inform her. She gets a message and runs to talk to a man in a restaurant, who, she is told, is from Michelin. It turns out he isn't the one. Fat was a time in Maggie's life when she found peace in Frederick. The doctor told her that she was fine, and that the mole was nothing to worry about. She looked inconsolable even then. The fear had taken hold of her. The doctor said she needed to vent to someone to distress. Maggie went to Malice to talk to Karsten. He was too busy to talk. He told her to shop for the kids' school lunches. Until he got off work. He said they would walk home together after that. Maggie shopped and reached Malice. Karsten had already left, after his tiresome time in the kitchen. Distraught, Maggie started to walk home alone, holding the bag of groceries. On the way, Frederick asked her to join him for drinks and have a relaxing time. Though she was hesitant at first, she decided to join him eventually. They sat, talked, laughed, and drank together in a bar. Maggie couldn't remember the last time she felt this relaxed. The night ended with them starting a forbidden, explicit love affair. The grocery bag was left forgotten in the bar, symbolizing Maggie overlooking her family, just like Karsten does. In the present, Karsten asks Maggie to come home, prompting her to stop her search for Michelin. She comes home and sees Frederick sitting with Karsten. She looks uneasy. Karsten says Frederick will take care of Hamden the possible Michelin. Hamden has checked into a hotel, and the receptionist will call Frederick once she confirms it is really him. Maggie comes to sit with them, and tries to act normal. While Karsten goes away to check on August, Maggie asks Frederick if he is the one who wrote the letter. Frederick doesn't seem to understand. There is a beep on his phone. He reads the message and puts down the mobile. Apparently, he knows where Hamden is. Maggie asks him to tell her. Frederick says, if she wants to know the whereabouts of Hamden, he will tell Karsten about how they got together once. She needs to choose between her marriage and her dream of getting a Michelin star. Karsten is back, and he asks for an update. Frederick looks at Maggie, who is in a dilemma. Maggie makes her choice, and tells Karsten that they couldn't locate Hamden. Frederick gets up to leave. He says to Maggie, when Karsten is out of earshot, that the offer is still on the table. She can know where Hamden is, if she comes to his place tonight. Maggie goes back to the distressed Karsten, who thinks he is a failure of a father, a husband, and a restaurateur. He says he is sorry for not giving Maggie the happiness she deserves. They share a brief moment. Maggie can feel the pain of Karsten, for it is her pain too. Seemingly making up her mind, she leaves to go to Frederick's. Going back to the past, the salt phase is shown. Maggie would have secret phone calls with Frederick, who was away in Paris. He wanted her to leave everything, and come be with him there. She would say she needed time to find a way. At that time, they were camping in a forest. She was with her kids, picking mushrooms. Frederick's phone call distracted her, and she lost August. She and Chloe tried to find him, but their efforts were in vain. She forced Chloe to go out to the main road to guide Karsten, who was coming for help. It was a truly traumatic experience for Chloe. The search party found August sleeping in the woods. Back at home, Maggie and Karsten stood over their kids, who were sleeping safely in bed. Maggie was crying, hugging Karsten. She realized she loved her family more than anything. She and Karsten shared an intimate moment that seemed like the first one in a very long time. Meanwhile, Frederick was calling on Maggie's number, and Chloe saw it. The next day, the family was glad to be reunited. Maggie didn't need Frederick anymore. She has made up her mind. In the present, Maggie has reached Frederick's place. She asks him to get intimate with her and tell her where Hamden is. He says this isn't what he wants. Maggie snaps at him. This is exactly what he wants. She weeps while Frederick is getting intimate with her. This time, she is doing it for her husband and their dream, and nothing else. After it's over, she asks Frederick for the Michelin. 
To her bewilderment, he tells her that there was no Michelin in town. It was a sham. Dropping another bomb, Frederick claims that he loves her. Maggie says he doesn't possibly love her. She leaves, crying all the way home. She finds Carson awake, smoking. She tells him about the prankster and how they are safe. Karsten tells her he has found the letter. He forces her to tell him who it was that she had an affair with. She tells him the truth, all the while apologizing. She tries to justify what happened. She says she felt lonely, but it doesn't matter anymore because she ended it a while ago. She goes on to say that she has realized no one can have it all. She clings to him, kisses him, and hugs him. She keeps on saying that she is sorry and that she loves him. But Karsten isn't ready to forgive. He says he doesn't love her anymore and throws her out of the house. He cries on the kitchen floor. Little Chloe, hidden behind a wall, overheard everything and is weeping silently. Two months later, heat. Karsten and Maggie, though fallen apart in their personal life, are still partners in their business. The journalists and the news reporter click their photos together. They decide not to say a word about their relationship to the press. The announcements for the Michelin star winners are just around the corner. They are called by Chloe's school teacher, who says that Chloe is not doing well in school. She is always unhappy and stays to herself. Her teacher suggests counseling for Chloe. Karsten and Maggie realize that their rotten relationship is affecting their kids. Karsten says it doesn't matter what they want to be, what matters is what the reality is. He thinks Chloe isn't the one who needs help, since she isn't the root of the discord. Maggie is silent while listening to Karsten put all the blame on her. Upon realizing what it sounds like, Karsten takes back his words. Her parents took the teacher's advice, and Chloe is now in group therapy. She expresses how she feels, and confesses that she was the one who wrote the letter. She says she did it, and hopes that her father would amend everything. But instead, everything went haywire. She thinks she is the reason behind the chaos, so she doesn't want her parents to know it was her. Today is the Michelin announcement night. Maggie is with the kids at Malice. The staff, Torben, and Karsten are also gathered around the television, watching the results. They are expecting to be named in the one-star category winners. But when the names are announced for the one-star winners, there is palpable tension in the room. Malice isn't one of those names. The anticipation turns into disappointment. A staff member is angry at Karsten for not attending the award show personally. He thinks it offended the judges. Karsten had sent Stellan in his stead. He says he didn't go because he wanted to be here in Copenhagen for his kids. This is a new thing, a new flavor that Karsten has added to his life. The names of the two star category winners are being announced now. To everyone's surprise, Malice is one of them. They all are jumping with joy. Maggie gasps with utter happiness, and Karsten is stunned in disbelief. Torben hugs him and congratulates him for standing out in the family. The staff asks Karsten to give a speech. Karsten compliments every staff member and apologizes for being hard on them. He tells them he has realized that there is more to a restaurant than just the kitchen. He acknowledges Maggie being the main person behind everything that Malice is today. He owes everything to her. He narrates how she was the one who introduced the hot dog recipe, which is now on Malice's menu. While everyone toasts to Maggie, Chloe gets a seizure. Maggie and Karsten dash towards her. Amid her whimpering, Chloe manages to tell her parents that she was the one who wrote that letter. The family sits together at Malice. Karsten is making Maggie's signature hot dogs. Maggie soothes Chloe, who has now recovered from her seizure. Maggie tells her that it isn't her fault, that mom and dad fell apart. She admits that only they are to be blamed for whatever happened. The kids don't think the hot dogs are authentic enough, so the family goes to a hot dog stand to have actual hot dogs. Street food doesn't need any Michelin stars. It is delicious enough to connect people together. The movie ends with the camera on the marble church, an identical scene to the movie's opening. Karsten and Maggie's love has been revived. 